studying the studying from volume 60, number 36, beloved St. Germain, and is dated September 22nd, 2017. But I think there's an update because it was in um, Sunday, May 1st, 1966. So as we share in this teaching this morning, we look and we read into the eternal values within, it says, your soul, but we're looking within our soul as for the upliftment of the Almighty. In Matthew chapter 16, verse 26, it asks, for what is a man profited if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? So you have to ask, what is my soul worth? As we know that the Almighty is protecting us and guiding us. So this is a question that Jesus had put forth to every man, boy and girl today. The soul is the most valuable possession that you ever have in life. And what value do you place on it? So as we go through our teaching today, these are just some of the questions that I wrote out and as reading and was thinking along the path of what the Almighty has given us to do. The task that we have at hand. And we have to understand why the soul is so valuable. Because the soul is a part of us that will live throughout all eternity. Before God created man, he said, let us make man in our own image. And God took up the dust from the earth and created man and blew breath into our nostrils and we became a living soul. Genesis chapter two, verse seven, the Hebrew word for soul is nepesh. It is a soul of humanity that will live forever. So as we ask and want to learn today uh, and study on the teaching of what the Almighty can do for us and give us. And it also tells us about what humility would bring to man's awareness of his brother. That we're able to reach out and see that our brothers and sisters need our care and our guidance. So it, it also tells us in a Bible in the Bible, that if we see someone needing something and don't give to them, as, they, as it reads, uh, you know, I'm kind of paraphrasing here. Uh, I don't have the verse down for you right at the moment, but I can grab that at a moment's notice. I have the Bible here, but also just what we need to know is what do our brothers and sisters need from us? You know, uh, we, we were speaking on this some time back. We looked at you know, I mean, we travel quite a bit, you know, in, to, and from, from job site to job site around the world. And we can mention, can't even count how many times we've seen, uh, we call it panhandling of uh, sisters and brothers standing on the side, needing our assistance. Uh, you know, we had one of the things happen here in Chicago. Uh, one of the brothers uh, was panhandling. He had no place to live, but he was lying on the ground asleep. And a guy walked over. Instead of uh, giving him funds and helping him out, he poured gasoline on him and set him on fire. That is not what the masters had in plan for our humility, for our brothers and sisters. And it also tells us faith will bring to him awareness of his God. So faith will bring us into awareness of what it is that our Father has given us the opportunity to do. So this faith that we have, we have to know that the Almighty is going to handle what it is. If we're faithful in what it is that we're doing, reaching out to him and making those calls and doing the work that he's given us the opportunity to do, we will see that our faith will grow more and more. But if you don't do the work, you can't see and build up your faith. So you have to be ready uh, for 
that work that the masters have given us. Our beloved St. Germain start off with our teaching and it reads, gracious one, the tenderness of God is heard in every sighing wind. The gentleness of God is heard in all the manifestation of the soul as it speak unto the outer self and bid that outer self to be still. We remember when Jesus was out teaching and he um, was on the boat and he had quite a few boats that was around him. And as he was teaching, uh, and once he kind of moved off from the seashore and out into the sea, there was a storm that ra started raging. And while the storm was raging, he went below deck or in a corner uh, at the time and went to sleep. And as the boat was filling with water, you know, they came over and asked him, say, what do you don't care if we perish? But Jesus stood up and said, peace be still. So as we are, as Jesus is able to calm the raging sea, he wants us to be able to calm our Holy Christ self within us. We are supposed to be able to make that guidance and walk as he is directing us to do. So as we speak to the outer self and bid that outer self, peace be still. That way we can come into alignment of what it is that the masters are walking forward with us on. It tells us our beloved Jesus also did a lot of other work and gave us the opportunity to work on that peace be still. We read also in uh, Psalms 46 where uh, our beloved Jesus asks, tells us says, be still and know that the voice that is directing directing us on our path is God. That still small voice that we hear speaking to us is the God of our soul. And he also says, I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. So the Almighty is letting us know that the guidance that he has for us is there. But whether are we ready to step forward and receive it? And it goes on to say, for in the clamoring, in other words, the shouting of mortal terror that is bred upon the planet Mara thought form, which produced distress in the consciousness of humanity. But those among mankind who foster and nourish tranquility are scattering seeds of happiness to the four winds for the improvement of the climate of consciousness upon the earth and for the blessing of untold generation to come. That's through right mindfulness that the Almighty has given us, and we're supposed to be able to work forward into it. If we put forth those thoughts into our mind and have that mindfulness that God has given us this opportunity and stay on the path and not wander off, because the guidance that we are doing at this time, the guidance and that he's putting forth and given us we are able to plant those seeds of tranquility for the people that's coming behind. If we look at what our beloved Mark and our beloved Elizabeth did, all the work that they did, I mean, we're working through the same seed and teaching that they gave to us. And it's gonna be working through this time and forth. So as we prepare to use this and understand the wisdom, that they have left here for us to work from, we'll be able to move forth and continue to nourish, um, you know, the tranquility and scatter those seeds of happiness. And it, it, Saint Germain goes on to say, "They are an enduring quality, gracious one, and the right thoughts and right action, for out for outlives the individual monads." in its unindividualized embodiment. When individuals understand the efforts of their own influence that are often brought, they are often brought to their very knees. So in other words, if you understand what it is that the teaching that you have, and once you come to realize what all of this teaching means, and you're able to have access to it, 
and you're able to give it out. You're able to work with it. You're able to understand it. I, we know that you know, everything that we read at this moment is not going to be fully clear to us until we have an opportunity to quiet the mind, quiet the body, and then you will understand more frequently what the spirit is trying to walk you through and let you know. Because the spirit is what's going to awaken you. The Holy Spirit is going to enlighten you now that you have put this into work and into your mind. And St. Germain goes on and says, but there, there they seek to comprehend the all-knowing mind of God and to fathom the intent, that mind that they may be able through divine cognizance, in other words, through harmony and manifestation, through concord with eternal principle, to release into the atmosphere these qualities which a mountain tide of light will set the world aright. So through right action and right movement, we will have the understanding of what to work with. St. Germain shared with us that in the beginning, God gave us dominion over the earth. This was given unto mankind, gracious one, and this per se does not include outer conditions. Everyone has free will. So out of everyone having free will, there's things out there that you're not going to be able to control. You're only able to control what is going on within your frame, within your mind, within your being. Everything that's under your control, you can handle. But things that are not under, under your control, you just have to make calls on it because we're not trying to work into uh, we're trying to stay within the Holy Spirit as far as what we're doing. We cannot control other being. It does not include the internal realm of the spirit of man, your spirit. There is a realm of peace and tranquility within through right faith. It includes the realm of comprehension, the realm of knowledge and contact that reaches up to understand the great height of God, from whence cascade the manifestation of his light substance as a fountain of light descending to the earth to bring the hopes of the world through right effort and right thoughts, we're able to move forward in the understanding of that wisdom. Second Corinthians 13, as our beloved brother read with, to us this morning, and it tells us to be perfect, be of good comfort, be of one mind, and live in peace. And God of love and peace shall be with you. Gracious one, as St. Germain goes on, the hour is now at hand when greater and greater scientific feat shall be accomplished upon the planet by your scientists. The day is at hand when an era of hope and prosperity such as has never graced the earth may well come into manifestation. But I am certain that the foreboding, in other words, the fearful apprehension of feeling uh, something bad is about to happen of civilization, the rumbling of mortal intent toward destructivity are also apparent to the more observant among you who in your conversation with your own presence and in your pleas for enlightenment, do realize that at the same time, you are making these pleas. The world in action is in the world of pearls because of our lack of activity. Because of our lack of activity, the masters, our beloved Saint Germain are saying that the world is in pearl. So, as we are, we're giving dominion over the earth, we're given the opportunity to do that work. But if we don't do the work, we can't keep things in alignment. Granted, we're making a lot of calls, but evidently there's more that can be done. So we have to keep walking in that light. 
St. Germain shares with us that the reason that the world is in peril is because of our inaction, which we have spoke on that. We're not doing what we should. We were given dominion over our physical and spiritual being. We were given free will to combat these sources. So that free will that each and every one have, we can't infringe upon them, but the free will that we have and the work that we're able to do, as long as it's the, God, the Lord's will, we're able to move forward in that teaching. For the action of humanity, says St. Germain, are not all kind and benign. No, not by any means. The action of humanity are often tinged with all aspects of horror that are portrayed in the most destructive stories released. For example, those by Edgar Allan Poe and men oftentimes feel as though they are in a pit of moral terror with a pendulum of destruction swinging above them. You know, in my reading of the Edgar Allan Poe, where he was speaking about him being in a pit and he only had the one arm that was free and they, that he was able to uh, feed himself with and do things, but he noticed this pendulum that was swinging back and forth across as he was lying there. So as the pendulum swung across, I guess it cut whatever it was that had him binded so he was able to get off of it. But the terror of it, I'm sure if you read it, you'll find it very interesting. So these are the things that there's a lot of things in our lives that are holding us down and holding us back. But if we continue to stay on the path with that guidance and understanding that our beloved St. Germain is sharing with us, we're able to move forward in that movement. And it says, St. Germain said, let me speak. Let me then speak to you, precious one, the word of assurance that heaven in its greatest intent toward the earth has not in any way abandoned the chilas of light. So they haven't abandoned us. And they also said that they haven't abandoned earth either. So they are the one that's continuously working and making that call so that we are able to step forward and continue to move. And it says, rather precious one, we'll consult it together more often as the pearls of the world has increased. And we have sought ways and means of how we might not only assuage the terror, in other words, make an unpleasant feeling a little bit more a little less tense. We have sought ways of means of how to, we might not only assay, assuage the terror of humanity, but also how we might remove it cause and core, thus preventing outbreaks of all form of mortal imperfection. The mission of the Christ 2000 years ago upon the, earth, upon the planet, the great outreach of peace of the Buddha, and the manifestation of all sacred fire intent through many religion have not served to stem the tide of mankind aggressive, nor to prevent brutal wars from breaking out upon the face of the earth. With all their destructivity and fruitless accomplishment, says Saint Germain, gracious one, perhaps you will see the paradox in my word of fruitless accomplishment. The beloved St. Germain tell us that there are some that believe that if they, um, if the war, war didn't affect them as much, they would be okay. They would be okay with the war. But the key thing of it is, as he shared with us, that war never saved anything because there was no peace. The only peace that can be given is through our beloved Jesus the Christ. These individuals seem that if they could have a personal immunity therefrom, then war itself would not be too bad. And they consoled themselves with the idea that afterward, there might come about an era of peace and prosperity. Our beloved Saint Germain said, let me tell you precious one, that no war has ever produced the seed of peace. Peace itself is a quality only of God, and it must be cultivated within the heart of the being of man. 
It tells us that war stem from personal unrest and personal greed. They are started by hatred that are not calm. They are started by storms that continue to grow and expand in human dimensions of thought and feeling. The way then to end these struggles is through understanding and true understanding that is vouchsafed to mankind from within his own soul and heart through internal communion with God. So the only way that we can calm all of this down is that our communication with the Father, our communing with the Father and letting him direct our path. And it tells us those who study history, precious one may find many statements calculated to excite mankind to war and hatred. But those who study the internal security of their own being and the great power of creativity that lie within the human soul, those who study the hand of God as God has moved them, these are able to understand how to produce peace upon earth. The head of state, gracious one, are often in a state of great terror themselves. Yet at times they throw off their terror as a means of preservation and personal sanity and say to themselves, well, I'm doing the best I can. I can't do anymore. I would like to point out to the masses of humanity that when an individual is charged with the responsibility of being head of state, that individual cannot always maneuver every condition or circumstance to his liking. He is often the subject of cruel and brutish, brutal jokes, the butt of horrible criticism, which are level at that one simple, simply because he seeks to do his best. And quite frankly, often men as a head of state are not as evil as other men imagine them to be. And it goes on to say, it is true, of course, that in the course of history and human event, there have been many tyrants upon the planet. And there are many today who dwell in high places, such as these do not seek to do their best. They seek but to express the tyranny of an ego, long subdued and, and repressed, which at last by reason of, attain, of its attainment can break forth and spew over the people of the world. All the internal hatred, which they have stored up for many, many years, like a coral spring under great tension. I would like to point out to you then, precious one, that these men have in reality ought but mortal power. So basically what the masters are saying is that, you know, you, the one that we want to blame, they don't have the luxury of being able to do the things themselves. There's a lot of things happening in our world now and always that one person cannot change, one person cannot do, because you're only given so much power. God is the only power that can act. So we have to know that our beloved father, we have to put the work in their hand in his hand and allow him to make that move. This is seen through the glass of our consciousness, through the clear image evoked by the Christ presence of every man. A tendulant experience indeed, and it brings home to all who see it, the great need for humility and faith. I stress these two qualities, humility and faith will bring to man the awareness of his brother. As we spoke on earlier about what our brothers and sisters need, this goes on and on. We have to be able to take care and reach out. When we see our brothers and sisters in need, you have to be able to reach out and raise them up in order to bring them along. Because if we're just bringing ourselves along, you know, you only, you know, you can't say, well, look at me, you know, I'm doing great. Why aren't they? 
but you know you have to be able to reach back and take care of those as well. Through this application, the application of the heart to the deity and the application of his heart to the need of man, he is able to rise in selfless manner into the arm of cosmic Christ service. And he thereby seeks to wipe away in God's name some of the tears from the world scenes and to bring greater freedom and compressed compassion to a world in bondage. For I ask you this day and age, most gracious one, what struggles does ensue of personal nature in everyone's life, known or unknown? What struggles does ensue behind the diplomatic scene of the world, known or unknown? What struggle does ensue from inner levels of cosmic light, which ascended masters seek to reach the earth and bring humility, the quickening power of light, and men turn a deaf ear. What struggles does ensue, known or unknown? The grace of heaven, as heaven seeks to lift the pall of mortal reason, is immense. And it would seem as though the grace of heaven in all its immensity would be sufficient to lift every speck of mortal darkness forever from the world. Our teaching today tells us that yet so great is this darkness in the human consciousness, this density of oppression lingering over the years that mankind can scarcely grasp in many cases the simplest thought about spiritual experiences. So what we have to think about as far as our spiritual experiences, what are some of the things that we have experienced in this life that the Almighty is blessing us with? The Almighty has given us an opportunity not only to go out to our brothers and sisters and reach them and heal them, but what are we doing in order to say that you know our soul is into what it is that's going on. The Father has given us this opportunity as he put us here and gave us dominion over the earth, over our feeling world, over our spiritual world. What are we doing with that? Are we walking in that light and doing the work of the masters? For they have dwelled long in the realm of mortal thought and feeling. Their concerns is indeed basic to their survival. The survival of their physical form and their old association in the time stream. Beloved Saint Germain said, let me then say to you, as you grant, gain a greater sense of eternal values, you will care less and less for the thing of the world. Yet you build well that which you build, for you will recognize that is the outworking of eternal values within your soul that calls you one and all to do that which thou does and does well. Thus the kingdom of God is enhanced by men of virtue and valor, by women of contemplation and action. The kingdom of God is enhanced by those who understand the need to ponder in their heart and who also understand the need to come out from the state of wonderment into the arena of action and to the forthrightly evoked purity, holiness, love, artistic understanding and culture in the world and the youth of the world and their contemporaries. Thus you are emissaries of God, says Saint Germain. You are ambassadors of light. And your role in the world is to continue according to the capacity of your soul to serve that holy cause that will produce fruit upon the divine tree, fruit upon the human tree, and fruit for all eternity. Ladies and gentlemen, although the world may be in pearls, Remember Jesus' word, let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. 
So as we read that, and it's stating to us, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my father's house, there are many mansions, we are told. If it were not so, I would have told you. Our home of eternal life is with the Father. And as the scripture reads, the Father's house, there are many mansions. There are many streets. There are many religions, in other words, that leads to the Father's house. There's always the different things that's happening. There's a lot of different people that you will find that's walking that same path from all the different religion going home, you know, from, you know, Islam, Buddha, you know, uh, Baptists, saints, uh, Catholics, we are all walking and moving to the father's house. So in his house, there are many mansions. In other words, there's many people that's coming of different descent for that blessing and that guidance. God has given us that, that opportunity. And it tells us, remember gracious one, that while you continue to struggle against the forces of darkness and evil, all the forces that seek to bring you into bondage of personal nature, all the forces on the world scene that are manipulated by black magicians, and those hordes of shadows who seek to bring the world and yourself under domination. We ourselves serving in the cause of right Christ magnificent are also engaged with you shoulder to shoulder in this struggle. So whatever you're struggling with, the masters are letting you know that they are working right along beside us to guide us, not just us because we're in the teaching, but all brothers and sisters that's out there that's heading into our Father's house. As they are walking, heading into uh, the Father's house, as Jesus says, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. As far as your, our eternal home for our soul, this is where we're headed. And it goes, and St. Germain goes on and say, if this world seem bleak in this hour, consider the tender threads of consciousness. Consider the tender threads of contact, which we will and recognize how frightfully the black pall of human misery extends itself over the centuries as a shadow of oppression, seeking to bring humanity into bondage. I believe St. Germain says that we are witness not only of a segment of this oppression, but we are a witness of the span of the centuries. We see it all in, in all of its human grossness, and we recognize that it has no power. We tell ourselves and we make that fiat, it has no power, and it has none in the realm of the divine. So as our beloved St. Germain says, that's one thing that we should recognize, just close our eyes for one moment and go into meditation and, and thought. And as the spirit tells us and speak to us that all that is not of the light, it has no power. It has no power. It has no power. Only the power of the Almighty can act. It has no power. It has no power. It has no power. It's only the power of the Almighty that can act. As we stand in that light and we wait for God to give forth that presence and that guidance, we know that the light of God is lifting us up and raising us according to that realm. But in the realm of humanity, it has continued to serve as a veil of severance from the presence of life. And the veil of the holies of holies was rent in twain. So it is our prayer 
that the veil of evil shall one day be repudiated by men and women of goodwill in all circles and state of consciousness by men and women in the diplomatic service of the government of the world, by men and women in position of leadership and rule by men and women of culture. Instruction by those who teach, by those who are taught by men and women of science, by men and women of exploration. We pray then, we pray that this veil be repudiated for the great fruits of the world and the search of a new world may be mustered together the way that Isabella assisted Columbus. And as we think about the light and the guidance that the Almighty has shared with us and given us the opportunity, our beloved, our beloved brother, the Buddha, shared with us some thoughts. And I would like for you to look into this as we moving through and completing out on our service. And the Buddha asked us to, to do one thing, to tame the mind, because the Buddha tells us that every religion is based upon eternal values. And the Buddha shared with us on the eightfold path of that, of that thought. And he mentioned right faith, right action, right speech, right effort, right mindfulness, right views, right livelihood, and right concentration. So as we are moving forward into keeping our soul in alignment with the Almighty and our soul in alignment, so as we walk and make our walk our pathway home to the Almighty, we ask for that blessing and that guidance to continue that our eternal values within our soul and within our home be enlightened upon each and every one. O great host of heaven, we give thanks, beloved Saint Germain, for thy blessing and thy guidance that you have given us and thy teaching that you're able to raise us up with thy wisdom and enlighten us as we go forward in thy name.